Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a very important prepper tool that you may not have considered yet, and I'm going to give you a little bit of reasoning behind why I think it's an important prepper tool. Today we're looking at the Bosean FS600 radiation detector and dosimeter. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I guess to begin this video, I kind of have to explain to you what a dosimeter is. Now a dosimeter will measure cumulative dosage of an exposure event, a nuclear war or whatever. And you have to remember, radiation exposure is a cumulative, it has a cumulative effect on the body. So it doesn't go away after, over time. So it's important to know how much you've been exposed to, say, over a weekly, monthly, or yearly period. Okay, radiation, radiation exposure is kind of weird. It's, it's sort of like lack of sleep. Now, what we're talking about here is much, much higher levels than your average everyday background radiation. But up to a certain point, you really don't suffer any of ill effects from it. You may not even notice it. And then there's a range where you start to feel the effects from it a little bit from cumulative exposure. But um, as your exposure levels increase, you enter this kind of weird range where you're asymptomatic. You kind of think of that as your second wind. Then things start to catch up with you and it goes downhill very, very quickly. Now, like I said, these aren't small amounts. Like what you're going to be seeing here for background radiation today is not anything to worry about. We're talking about levels in the 300 to 500 rogen range. That's seriously problematic and possibly lethal within a few weeks anyway. 50 rogens is probably worthy of concern, but it's not problematic in the short term. Your overall health condition is also significant because radiation sickness impacts, among other things, your immune system. So if you have a compromised immune system, different levels of radiation can affect you more severe than other people. So that's where a device like this comes into play. All right, the FS600 is a small little high-range radiation tester and detector. The main function of this is to monitor X-ray, gamma ray, and beta ray um, radiation. The tester this is a, a little compensated energy Geiger counter in there. It's a glass tube. That's pretty much the industry standard. They're uh, usually characterized by pretty accurate measurements at very high ranges. And this uses a 32-bit microprocessor, and it's equipped with a 64-by-128 uh, dot matrix LCD display. This has a bunch of alarms, okay? The alarm threshold is always adjustable, so even if you're in the middle of monitoring an event and you want to change your threshold, you can do that, okay? And the alarm will also sound to let everybody know in your area that there's a possible issue with radiation. Okay? So this can detect, um, can detect X-ray, beta ray, and gamma rays. There is a trend graph on it, so if you can kind of see the trends of how things are going. I'm going to turn it on here so you can actually look at it while I'm talking. There we go. And those are microsieverts per hour, so it's very, very, very low level. Okay? And the bottom is your cumulative effect down there. And you can put a light on this. Um, I haven't turned the light on yet. We'll show, I'll show you that when we go into the menus on it. There is a trend graph. Like I said, there's a particle sound. That's that typical sound you always hear when somebody's using a, a rad meter over something, like click, 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 click stuff. That's the noise you'll hear there. Okay. There are two different alarm sounds, and there is a display sound. So when you're clicking around, you'll see the display. Something similar to this, you guys might um, remember, those of you that are old enough from your childhood, would be this old guy here. These are dosimeter pens, okay? And what this is is your charger. This will reset these pens, but these pens were able to detect radiation over a long period of time. And I believe they only go up to 200 rogens, which is pretty darn serious to begin with. But you carry this in your pocket, okay? And you look through it, and at the end of the day, you hold it up to a light, and there's a little, little uh, cat whisker type hair down there that moves across the uh, bar. At the end of the day, you would record your radiation level, say, 10 rogens, you'd write that down, you put the pen on this and reset it. So this is a similar device. That's basically what this device does. Now this will also measure the dose rate in real time and will keep your cumulative rate forever if you want to keep it on here. You can do that. You can reset that later. I've reset it when I first got it just to keep it at zero for my own personal use. But you can go in there and reset it and see what you want to see. Again, here you go with all your different displays. Okay, back to the one, back to the main one, that is. So this also has that dual buzzer alarm system that will give you an alarm when your dose rate is too high or the dose value is too high. Now, when the radiation dose exceeds, say, 10 microsieverts per hour, it has a blocking and warning prompt here that will tell you you're in danger. 
You can power this two different ways. Now I have three triple A's in here right now, but you will notice there is a plug on the side here. Now this doesn't connect to a computer. My other um, dosimeter does, my other electronic dosimeter. But this one doesn't connect to a computer, but that is a power source. So let's say you're out of AAA batteries, you've got a power bank nearby, you can plug the power bank in, or your power station, whatever, and you can power this through that. So that's a lot longer of a battery life. The battery life in these is about 14 hours with three AAA, so that's really not all that bad. There does, there's a low battery reminder as well, so that's important to, to know, you know. You definitely don't want to uh, run out of battery while you're measuring something. So I've been talking about different types of measurements of um, radiation. You know, we always think of it as rads or rogens, or, but there is a much smaller measurement that we can, it's more effective for us when we talk about long-term dosage, and that's Siebert's. The Siebert's derived of a unit, it's derived from a unit of ionizing, ionizing radiation dose, and it's part of the international system of units and measures, and basically it gives you the health effect of low-level ionizing radiation on the human body. So let's talk about how much radiation is dangerous, okay, in sieverts and micro sieverts. I'm going to bring this over here to show you. I printed this up, okay. Now this shows you your long-term habitation levels of like 0 0.20 micro sieverts, okay. That's safe for long-term habitation. That's normal background radiation. Your uh, medium to long-term habitation of 0.5 would be a little bit higher, but it's still safe. Uh, one would be safe for short-term habitation only. Two, you want an elevated risk, you want to take precautions. Five is another elevated risk, but you want to re relocate. And as we said, 10 microsieverts is danger, and you want to re re relocate out of there quickly. 20 is high danger, 100 is high danger. And of course, it goes up and up to 10 million microsieverts, which is over organ failure and death within hours. Of course, you don't want to be anywhere near that. But this is a handy little chart. You can, you can pause this and print it if you want, or just write it down. I'll give you a second there. So pretty much, to give you an idea, let's just say 10 microsieverts is the amount of radiation you receive today. Perfectly normal. It's just the background radiation. You see here I'm getting uh, 14 per hour. Uh, not 14, 0 0.14 per hour. That's really not a bad deal there. That's not much. The next is 40, okay? 40 microsieverts per, per hour is the radiation you receive um, taking a flight from New York to L.A. I'm sorry, that's for the entire flight, not per hour. That's the radiation you're going to get from going from New York to L.A. in a in, in jet. 100 is the radiation you might receive during a dental x-ray. Uh, let's say 800 microsieverts is the total radiation dose of Three Mile Island for the duration of the accident. Now here's something interesting for you ladies. 3,000 microsieverts is the radiation dose from one mammogram. I'm not telling you not to get a mammogram, just letting you know that there's, there's safe levels and there's unsafe levels. It, it's really all about time, distance, and exposure. How long are you exposed to that 3,000 microsieverts? Very, very short time. Okay, now the maximum allowable yearly occupational dose, and there are people that have had to retire from their jobs working in the nuclear industry because they've received a lifetime dose. The, uh, the maximum allowable per year is 50,000 microsieverts per year. Okay, so you definitely want to be careful when you get up in that range, if you're working in that industry, of course, you'll be continuously monitored and things will be recorded. So that's very, very interesting to know that, you know, there are jobs where people end up, you know, retiring because they can't receive any more radiation from their particular job. Uh, 100,000 microsieverts is the lo lowest yearly dose linked to increased cancer risk. And, of course, 2 million is severe radi radiation poisoning and it's usually fatal. Let me run you through the menu really quickly here. And the reason I'm explaining stuff about radiation in general is because a lot of people fear it. And it really isn't something to be feared. It's more something to be careful of and understand. So you know, if you see this on your meter, you're not going to run around freaking out because you know that's normal background radiation. So let's go into the meter, the, 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 um, the settings quickly. You have your alarm rate, alarm dose. I don't know if you can see that. You know what? I'm going to scroll down to the, to the um, backlight. I'm going to turn the backlight on. And yes, it's open or closed for on or off. There. All right. You can see that better. Let's go back up here. All right. So your alarm dose, you can clear your dosage. Your rate ratio, so that tells you how much exposure for over time. Your date and time, of course, which I just set before the video. Language, whichever language you choose. The curve is interesting, too, because that's a trend map, kind of. It sort of shows you the curve as you're going through your day. And you can get into that here, and you can see the trend. Okay. 
So you can see our trend here is pretty, very, very, very low. You know, it's up and down. And remember, too, where I live. <laughs> I live out in the middle of the Nevada desert, about 90 miles from Area 51. And across over the mountain there is a creature, whatever they call it now, Air Force Base, where they fly drones out of. So obviously we're going to be a little bit higher background, but not much. It really isn't all that bad. So that's your curve. This is your backlight, like we showed you. The sounds, you can turn on and off that little clicking sound that people are so used to with radiation detectors. And you'll go right back up there to your alarm rate, alarm dose. So you can change either one of those for whatever you feel comfortable with. Remember, we said radiation exposure is usually uh, a cumulative event that also depends on your immune system. If you have a compromised immune system, you may want to set the alarm for the dosage a lot lower than, say, someone like myself who doesn't. So that's pretty much it. That's how it works. Another neat thing about this is the cost. I have a bunch of other um, similar items that were anywhere from $400 to $150. This little guy here is $70, $69.99. Uh, the link will be down below. You can check it out. I got it off Banggood. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of buying off them and uh, trying out a lot of their products that they send me also. Um, and I have had absolutely no issues with the products they've sent me. Um, this, you know, this is going to be what I leave out here now to keep an eye on things. Not that I'm working with any kind of radiation, but still, it's a good idea to keep around. Um, you, another thing you can do if you buy one of these, they sell what's called a check source. And it is a specific amount of radiation, usually, of course, not harmful, in a tiny little container or rock or whatever. It's inside of something. And you can test your um, device and see how accurate it is. So if my, you know, my check source is... 0.2 microsieverts per hour and I put this up against it and read 0.8 I know either my check source is broken or my dosimeter is not working right so it's good to have um, quickly the material on this is made of ABS plastic the color of course is black it detects all of your beta gamma and x-ray um, radiation the sensor type as we said is that GM2 that's pretty much the industry standard I'm going to go back out of this again so you can see the display there you'll notice a heartbeat up here a heartbeat monitor that kind of lets you know the device is working currently, okay? Now, the maximum dose equivalent on this, the rate, is 99.99 microsieverts per hour. So that will definitely let you know when something is wrong. That's way, way high, so you definitely don't want to be around that. Like we said, the power source can either be three AAA, three AAA batteries, which aren't included, or the USB cable directly. Weighs about 5.1 inches, inches, or 160 grams. Uh, you will get that inside the package you will also get your cord to power it and remember this isn't a charging cable and this isn't a computer connect cable or anything like that this is simply to power it when your batteries die if you don't have any more you can plug this into anything else that's usb and power it and you will get a rather interesting well done manual here very very easy to understand um, so for those of you that are new to prepping and haven't really considered radiation or thought that if a nuclear bomb goes off, say, in New York and you live in California, it's an instant death sentence. It isn't. But you do need to get educated and you do need to understand. I've given you a very, very basic overview. I mean, I could go into the weeds on this for hours if I really wanted to. But I've given you a very basic overview of what this device does and the ranges that are dangerous or safe to be around. Again, some people will say if you ask them how much radiation is safe to be around, they'll say none. All right. But that isn't really useful for our usage. We want to know what's not going to hurt us. If there is an accident, if you live by a nuclear plant, a meltdown, whatever, you want to know the ranges that are safe for you and when you have to evacuate. And again, that's where bugging out would come in handy. You want to get out of there as fast as possible. Um, bugging out isn't always your best option, but for something like that, it would be very handy because, of course, you've got to get away from that. So all in all, I think the device is it's an awesome little device, really handy. Uh, works very, very well so far from my usage. If I'm going to be doing more of these videos, I want to invest in a check source to, uh, to um, be able to test them out a little bit better. I haven't done many videos on these. I think I showed you the older, uh, the older civil defense stuff in one of my videos. And I showed you a couple other smaller meters years ago. We're like, we're talking 2015 when I did a video on the one I have now, currently. So anyway, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any radiation type questions, okay, or if you work in this field and I've said something that's way off base, 
Feel free to leave comments below. Again, I am not by any means a radiation professional. This is just what I've learned from years and years of reading online. I could be off base on some things. I could be right on the money. So if you work in this industry and you know stuff about this and you want to maybe make a comment, feel free. I don't mind it. Heck, we can all learn more by people commenting. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. The link for this will be down below. Like I said, it's 70 bucks. Really not bad considering the going rate of a lot of these meters. I really can't complain about it. That's uh, not bad at all. Uh, I paid a lot more for some of them, so I'm pretty pleased with it. Don't forget to check all our links down below. We have our Amazon affiliate store. We have our freeze-dried wholesalers link. We're getting towards the end of the month, folks, so if you want to get those orders and get them in, and my link will save you 15%. All you got to do, click on the link, you get to save 15% on any of his food. We have our My Patriot supply link as well. That deal's coming to an end this month, so you want to get in there. We have our three-week kit for $150 off. Three-month kit, I'm sorry, for $150 off. So you want to check that out. That's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. And our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. I have some cool specials coming up next month, so you may want to hold off on that one because you want to check out the specials. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.